Staten Island drivers wouldn't be eligible for any exemptions under the congestion pricing plan approved by the MTA last week. The next phase of the plan are public hearings, which will get underway in February with the new tolls going into effect in the spring. Now, Staten Island Borough President Vita Fasella is joining us this morning to discuss the fight for more exemptions. So good morning, Borough President. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning. So before we get to the congestion pricing, though, I just wanted to check in with you about any possible damage or, or power outages from the storm that we had overnight. No, Nothing. we're pretty good. Uh, okay. We're a pretty resilient little crowd over here on Staten Island. So, so far, so good. And no flooding? Uh, not really uh, anything of, of, of merit to report. We've, we've come a long way. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 40 years ago, I think we would have had a lot of problems, but we've come a long way with uh, the blue belt system and drainage, and uh, we have more to do, but uh, so far, so good. All right, good to hear. On to congestion pricing, where drivers who use the Holland and Lincoln tunnels, as well as the Hugh Carey tunnel, will receive a $5 crossing credit under the toll plan approved by the MTA. Were you surprised that the same doesn't apply for Staten Island residents who use the Verrazano? No, I mean, we, we've been beating this drum since they floated the idea of congestion pricing. And, you know, the way I would characterize it, it's a three strike loser for the people of Staten Island. Uh, for those who may not know, Staten Islanders have to pay a toll on the Verrazano Bridge to get on and off Staten Island. They built a battery, you carry tunnel, you get into Manhattan. Now they want to impose a third toll. And the MTA's own study uh, demonstrates and, and validates what we've been saying all along that it will make air pollution worse next year and will get progressively worse over the next 20 years. It will increase traffic uh, on Staten Island. Uh, next year will get worse over the next 20 years, and we have to pay for it. So uh, in good conscience, I don't know why we would support it, which is why we plan to uh, initiate litigation in the coming weeks. And this is just, to me, it's been a money grab since day one. If they were concerned about congestion, uh, you know, as you just reported, there's traffic all over the place. You know, yeah. if it was about congestion, you'd be you have pricing on the, the Staten Island Expressway, for that matter. So I don't think the, I'm not questioning their personal motives. They want money. I get it. But the people of Staten Island shouldn't have to pay and subsidize uh, what is not really in their interest right now. Do you feel like, though, it's, a, it's basically a done deal? Because uh, following the MTA's vote last week, Mayor Adams said he hoped to add several more exemptions to the congestion pricing plan. Have you I even think, Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's out of the uh, it's it's a done deal as of now. My personal opinion that that they set the bar high at $23. They said it could be between 9 and 23, probably knowing all along they were going to come down the middle at 15. Uh, I assume this is still going to be those who want more exemptions. We will argue for, for ours. Now, our concern really is very fundamental. That is that Staten Island doesn't have a commuter rail like we, we see in other parts of the region. We don't have a subway system. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, the, the mass transit options have been inadequate. And at a minimum, they should have deployed and instituted better mass transit options for the people of Staten Island, especially ones that are car, so car dependent and will get punished, I think, uh, disproportionately. And none of that has occurred which is why we have to fight as much and as hard as we can to stop it from happening. Have you spoken with the mayor about that, though? About We have made our point very, very clear, uh, not just to the mayor, anybody who listens, that we uh, we think this is wrong for the people of Staten Island. We need better options, more mass transit options. We'd love to get people out of their cars, but the MTA over the last 30 to 50 years hasn't done what they should do, have done for the people of Staten Island. So we have to just do our best to fight as hard as we can on their behalf. Do you plan on testifying at one of the four public hearings scheduled for February? We will do everything, yes. We will do everything we can uh, up until now. And as I say, uh, as, unless something changes, uh, we plan to initiate litigation in the coming weeks uh, to try to prevent this from, from being implemented. Uh, and we will use, by the way, we will use the MTA's only own studies to prove that this is bad for the people of Staten Island. Why would we in good conscience embrace something that's going to make air pollution worse? Why would we in good conscience that's going to say traffic will get worse and we have to pay for it? So we have to put, use every hour every hour in our, uh, in our quiver. So to yeah, speak. well, to be continued. Uh, we want to switch yes. gears real quick uh, to the migrant crisis. So in September, you won the lawsuit to have migrants removed from uh, St. John Villa Academy. Do you see the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel in this whole migrant situation? 
As of now, no. I mean, every week there's another almost 3,000 coming into New York City. Uh, what we have said since day one, uh, like October of last year, that the right to shelter really doesn't exist. Anybody from around the world, if you want to take care of New Yorkers who are, are in need of help, who need some you know, transitional help, that's fine. We, I understand that. Uh, but we have never believed that it applies to anybody who says, I'm here from name a country, and I expect you to put me up in a hotel and feed me as long as I'm here. Uh, I get the, the, the noble aspect of it, but it's going to bankrupt potentially the city, which is what we're doing. Had they done this, had the city leaders done this a year ago, we wouldn't be in the position we're in now. But as of now, the welcome mat is still there. We yeah. said a year ago the federal government uh, opened the borders and allowed people to come in. Uh, wherever. It wasn't just a... If you remember the initial story where they were fleeing Venezuela for asylum, now every country under the sun just shows up in mm -hmm. Mexico, walks across and, and takes a bus or flies into New York City. So I do not see a light at the end of the tunnel until and unless the city says enough is enough. You know, this we, we can't afford this anymore. Um, I, I just don't see it stopping. Okay. And, and by the way, the federal government needs to step up and close the border as much as it can. We're running out of time here. I need to ask you what you think about the mayor saying that city agencies need to cut 5% and possibly more after the new year. The city council is saying that his numbers are off by a billion dollars and New Yorkers shouldn't feel the pain. What's your take? Well, again, I, I take a step back that I said, we said a year ago, money's fungible. This money's going to come from someplace and somehow, uh, you know, city taxpayers and Staten Island taxpayers are going to have to foot this bill. Uh, I do not support the effort. I understand it. Um, but listen, the, <laughs> we, the, the, the horse is out of the barn at this point. And it's unfortunate and it's unfair that this has happened. Uh, but we'll do whatever we can to prevent the more pain for the people of Staten Island because they shouldn't have to subsidize what we think was wrong from day one. All right, Borough President Vita Fasella, thanks for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much.